I was wondering, um, is there like a certain a certain code I can look up that like specifies what enhancement services are, or is it different for each county in California? That's a really good question, because uh, Cassandra, Jennifer, what do you think about that? This is The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win. I'm joined by my guest host tonight, Miss G, Georgette Truen, social media influencer, and of course with uh, Jennifer Ani, a child welfare specialist uh, in the state of California. Ladies, um, oh, before I forget, I have to give a shout out to one of our show sponsors, ShrineStore.com. If you're a rock star, you want to be a rock star, you're going to have to dress like a rock star. Check out trinestore.com. All right, ladies. Um, Miss, Miss G, I see you laughing there. I hope you're laughing with me and not at me. No. <laughs> All right, so let's take another call. We're going to talk to Cassandra from California. Cassandra, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Hi, I had a couple questions to ask about enhancement services specifically. Sure. If that's all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was wondering, um, is there like a certain a certain code I can look up that like specifies what enhancement services are, or is it different for each county in California? That's a really good question, because uh, Cassandra, Jennifer, what do you think about that? That is a good question. Um, so in my understanding of enhancement services, and, it, and my understanding fairly could be not correct, my understanding is that they are services that are offered to a parent when the child is in the home with the other parent. So, and in that situation, so for example, there's a mom and a dad, the child gets removed from mom, and under the law, if the father is a non-custodial, non-offending parent, the court is required to place with dad and the court may give quote enhancement unquote services to mom. And these would be services not necessarily designed to reunify on the theory that the child is well placed with dad. Um, if you could give me a little more context, I can probably give you a better answer um, to your question. So are you yes. the parent who is receiving enhancement services? I am a parent receiving enhancement services, but my daughter was detained from both of us for a year. And where is your daughter now? She has reunified with dad, and then they gave me enhancement okay. services when they reunified her with dad. Right. Okay. So enhancement services are an optional service. Um, the you know in providing them to you after she has reunified with dad, um, the intention would be to facilitate reunification to you as well in some type of shared custody situation. Um, do you feel that you're not get, but, but they're not mandatory. They're optional at the department's discretion. How can, I, so we can reunify. I can still reunify with my daughter, even though I'm in enhancement services. Is your case open? Yeah. If the case is open, there's always an opportunity to reunify. I concur. Okay. Is there like a code I can get it to my attorney? Because she's not, um, CPS is still recommending not to return. And we do have proof of why she should be returned to me. Um, that's not where we're, I'm going to stop at. She thinks that because I'm enhancement services, there's no way that, because we're not reunification anymore, there's no way that she'll be able to reunify with me. Well, that would not. Be well, that's. I would not agree with that. I would think that that is inaccurate, right. um, particularly because of the the requirement that while the department does not, they're not required to offer enhancement services. If they do offer them, then they must offer them full bore, meaning they must actually give you those services with the intention to reunify. Otherwise, what's the point, right? So mm -hmm. I think your attorney is not correct in this case. Hey, Cassandra, mm -hmm. this is what I want you to do. I want you to talk. When is your next court date? 
Um, April twenty second, I believe. Okay, and what type? Of, what type of hearing is it? I believe it's the closing hearing, and they're not. Um, they're saying that they don't want to reunify my daughter with me. They and they're actually trying to get me completely out of her life right now. Mm -hmm. But they don't have any grounds. Like we have a therapist that we see together who is supportive of us. All of my service providers are supportive of me. The only thing they have going for them is the dad who saw a psychiatrist is that psychiatrist is now seeing my daughter and he already has a biased opinion of me and is saying that I shouldn't be in her life. I'm a detriment to her. I'm a trigger to her and I'm the reason for her behavior issues. Well, you know, that's interesting because Jennifer, am I incorrect? Can the therapist for the dad also be the therapist for the child? Uh, that's very unusual. Um, I do know in instances that it's occurred, but it's very unusual. And I would argue in this case, because the opinion is that a parent should not be in a child's life, highly inappropriate. Um, there's a difference between reunifying and being in a child's life. Uh, a visitation order is always generally appropriate. And based on what you're telling me, it sounds like um, if what you're telling me is, is correct and there's nothing more, it sounds like they're should be reunification in your case. I can't really say more without knowing more facts, but I can say that the therapist statement is highly irregular and should definitely be subject at a minimum to cross-examination. Right, so Cassandra, talk to your attorney about filing a 388 petition and having a contest, a trial at the April hearing. Um, now, your attorney may not want to do either of those things and may give you excuses about them. And if they do, give me a call and I can talk to you, um, you know, at my office, 888 But you can get back in the child's life as long as your parental rights haven't been terminated. And it doesn't sound like that's what's happened in your case. They're offering you or can offer you enhancement services. But at any time, you can file a 388 and ask the court to return the child to you or give you joint custody or let you be around the child um, by filing the 388 and getting that evidence, you know, from the therapist into court, you know, underneath the judges. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, you know that file, is there a file to a motion to dismiss the psychiatrist or throw out what he says? My attorney's telling me there's not. You know, there's always a, a type of motion you can file to ask for any type of relief in, in a California courtroom. You can file a motion, but what I would do is I would call, you know, the licensing authority and ask them, you know, if this is a conflict of interest. And if it is a conflict of interest, you know, you might want to file a complaint. Um, you know, against that psychiatrist or psychologist for treating two Yeah, I have, I have followed a complaint. That's the problem is that's why he's so biased against me. Well, you know, if you call me during the week, we can talk about that. You know, you and or the child and or the father may have some type of civil action against that therapist. I'd have to, you know, know more facts. But it seems like, you know, just from what you've told me, there may be a conflict of interest. You know, I, in my opinion, and I may be wrong, I don't think he can treat both the father and the child in a juvenile dependency case. Yeah, I, I agree. And then my last question would be, even in enhancement services, can you still contest CPS's recommendation? You know, that's an interesting question. I always thought you could. Uh, but I do recall someone, a judge in, I don't know what county I was in, ruling that you couldn't, and I was very surprised about it, and that's why I mentioned to you, talk to your attorney about filing the 388 petition, because 388 is written, it says any person, you know, the guy on the street can come into court and file a 388. Doesn't mean he's going to win, you know, but anybody can file a 388 regarding anything, and they keep expanding, you know, what a 388 can be used for, and surely, in my opinion, this is one of those situations where you can file 388. Now, that doesn't mean the judge is going to agree with you, right? Right, but if I have custody of my other children? You have custody of the other children? I have custody oh, of Oh, that's a whole children. other issue. <laughs> um, oh. that, that big question, why you don't have custody of the child in question. If you have custody, I mean, if it's safe for the other children, why is it safe for your daughter, in other words? Yeah, so Sutter, so I'm in two different cases. I've called a few times. Um, 
and my case here, the girls are transitioning home and are supposed to be completely fully engaged in home by April 7th. And then my youngest son has been home the entire time. Well, that's something you're going to have to talk to your attorney too, because generally speaking for me, in my years of experience, if you're not a danger to one child and you have that child at home, I can't imagine a situation where you're a danger to the other child. Now, we're not mm -hmm. talking about what's best for the child. This isn't family law court, right? We're talking about, is are you a danger to the child where the child should be taken out of your care? Yeah, they're trying to say I'm a detriment to her mental health. Yeah, I think the, the, the actual statutory language when they place the child with another parent is that you're a... Um, a substantial risk, maybe. I'd have to take a look at the code. And, and, you know, maybe that's something you and your attorney should have or should uh, fight against because it's pretty. What's the code? You know, it's the disposition code. It's like 361, 361.2, somewhere around there. Okay. You know, because if the child is placed with a non parent, they have to prove substantial danger by clear and convincing evidence. But if it's placed with a parent, they only have to prove, I think, it's substantial risk. It, it's detriment. Okay. Um, 361.2 is the code section for placement with a non custodial, non offending parent. Uh huh. And it is detriment. Two minutes. Okay. So that's why they're trying to prove I'm a detriment. But like I said, we have a therapist that we see together who's completely um, actually has told them that they think that I'm being alienated <laughs> from the father. So at, at, at the hearing coming up, which is a hearing pursuant to code section 364 of the Welfare and Institutions Code, the only, the, the only question is if the court removes supervision from the situation, will the child be at risk of the same occurrences happening again? So it, you can contest what are called exit orders or the final order closing the case. Um, in, in this case, what based on what you're telling me, um, the department is looking to give the father sole custody and no contact with you. You absolutely can set a contested hearing as to exit orders and to uh, you know how it ends up. But as to 364, the only question is if the court removes supervision, will there be a danger to the child again? Hey, Cassandra, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Uh, call us back in about three or four weeks. Give us an update on the case. We've got to take uh, another break right now. This is The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win, and we'll be right back with Mrs. G, or Miss G. She wanted to make some comments uh, for the listeners. Mm -hmm.